Here we're going to get our practice with calculating the standard deviation, which we've talked about before in the last lesson. Uh, so just to remind yourself, this is what we've written down before. This is the sample standard deviation. This is the population standard deviation. The only real difference between the two is you have the number of, of elements in your population down here for the population standard deviation, but you subtract one before doing the calculation if you're dealing with a sample. Um, everything else is cosmetic. The symbol here is just a different symbol. The symbol here is a different symbol, but they both represent the mean, right? So let's go in and do one of these guys for real. Let's say, let's calculate, let's find the population standard deviation. That's what STD means, it means standard deviation. So in this particular case, we might have a data set which would be the uh, age of people in a room. And in this case, let's just pretend that the population is everybody in this room. I mean, I know that's not practical, that's not typically what you're doing in real life, but let's just pretend that uh, the ages of these people are actually the, um, the uh, entire population of everybody we care about. And so that would be five, six, three, five, seven, seven, eight, and 25. So this is everybody in the room. That's the entire population of everybody we care about. It'll tell you what type of population to calculate. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, what we want to do first is we want to write down what we're trying to find to remind ourselves. The standard deviation, right, is the square root of the sum of each individual data point minus the, sample, the uh, population mean, because we're talking about population, divided by n, right, which is the number of people in the population, and we have a square here because we have to square each difference like we always do. So the first thing we want to do, and I'll do it in red over here, is we want to find out what is the actual population mean. So we add everything together, 5 plus 6 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 7 plus 8 plus 25, so I had to continue on the next line. We divide by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what we get uh, when we do that is 66 on the top and 8 on the bottom. So we get 8.25. So the population mean of everybody here, if you kind of look at what's in the middle, you get 8.25. You have lots of data points down below 8 but this 25 here kind of pushes the average value up a little bit and that's why it kind of works out that way. Now, the way I've been showing you before to do this calculation is to write it all out with all the parentheses and all the squaring and that's great, I wanted to show you how to do that. But really when you have a large amount of data points like this, it can be very helpful to kind of write it in a table form. So you'll see that in your book a lot typically and I want to just kind of do it that way at least once to show you what I'm talking about. So the way you might see it done, the way it's convenient to do, is you, you might want to write your data down again. So your data is 5, 6, 3, 5, 7, 7, 8, and 25. So that's my data. And then for this calculation, what I'm going to end up having to do is take the data point minus the mean, and then after I do that, I'm going to square it. And then after I do that, I'm going to add everything up. And so the, the innermost thing I need to do would be to find this minus the mean. So I create another uh, part in the table just to calculate the subtraction for every data point in my list. So what I'm going to get is for every single data point, let me go ahead and I'll just do it in blue. I'll do it in blue. For every data point, I'm going to have 5 minus the mean. The mean is 8.25. So if I have 5 minus 8.25, I'm going to get negative 3.25, okay? For this guy, 6 minus 8.25 would be negative 2.25. 3 minus 8.25 would be negative 5.25. 5 minus 8.25 would be negative 3.25. So every time I go down the list, I'm taking the sample minus the, um, the, uh, the mean, right? So 7 minus 8.25 is negative 1.25, and then I have another negative 1.25 because these two sample values are exactly the same. And then I'm going to have 8 minus 8.25, which is negative 0.25. And then this guy, 25 minus 8.25, that's going to be positive 16.75. So all I've done in this table is I've done the subtraction inside here, each data point minus the mean. Then I go and create another 
guy here and I say another column minus the mean and now I'm going to square it. So you see in the previous step I have done the subtraction. Now in this column I'm going to go ahead and write down the, um, the values after you square it. So when you look at this column negative 3.25 and you square it you're going to get a positive 10.56. This guy when you square it gives 5.06. This guy when you square it gives 27.56. Six. This guy, when you square it, gives 10.56. All right. This guy, when you give square it, gives 1.56. Same thing with this, 1.56. And then finally, 0 0.0625 down here. Make this a 5. Make this clear. And Whoops. This needs to be a 5. And this is a 2. So 0 0.625. And then the final guy here is 280. 0.56, all right, like that. So instead of writing it all out as an equation and then kind of copying it over and over again like I was doing before, you start with your data point, you subtract the data point minus the mean, you write that down, you're gonna get lots of negative values in this point, but then you square everything, you should always have positive values when you get to this column. Now, in the calculation, I do the subtraction, I do the squaring, and then in order to get this numerator, I have to add all these values up. So what I would typically do is I would draw a line down here and then write something like sigma equals, which tells your teacher, or tells yourself, that I am adding everything up. When you add everything up in this column, what you get is 337.5. 337.5 is when I add everything up. So up to this point, I've got everything on the numerator taken care of. So if I want to continue my work over here, I would say that the variance is equal to the, I'm sorry, not the variance, the standard deviation is equal to 337.5 divided by how many uh, items do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight, so I'll put an eight down here. And so what I will get is under the square root, 337.5 divided by eight, I will get 42. Uh, one nine, like that. And so the standard deviation, once I take the square root, is 6.5. This is uh, it. Now, what are the units of the standard deviation? Well, I told you before, the units match the units of whatever it is. So in this case, we're talking about ages of people in the room. So five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old, for instance. So this is years. The standard deviation is 6.5 years. So that means in this data set, the mean happened to occur at 8.25. That was a good measure of roughly the center of this data set as far as a nice center value that you would pick. The standard deviation or the spread about that mean on average is about six and a half years about the mean, around the mean. It's a relative indication of how spread apart that data is, right? All right, so again, I did it in tabular form. You don't always have to do it this way, but I have eight data points, lots of decimals, lots of negative values. It's going to be good a lot of times for you to do a column of data, a column of subtraction, a column of squaring, and then you just add it up, and then you bring it over here and divide by n, and then you do the square root. Now, one thing I want to ask you before we move on, forget about the square root. Up until this point, not doing the square root, but just the 42.19, what is 42.19 in this problem? What is it called, right? Well, this would be the uh, population variance. 42.19 is going to be the variance because remember, the difference between the variance right here and the standard deviation is just the square root. The entire calculation under this radical is exactly what we've been doing in the last sections on variance. It's this, it is the variance. So once you get the variance, you take a square root and it becomes the standard deviation. So the very last step that you get right before you do that square root the 42.19, this is the variance of this data set. Now you understand why the variance does represent how spread the data is in a relative sense. I can compare two populations and look at which variance is bigger and I can tell you which one has more spread. But 42.19 really doesn't have any relation to the units of the problem I have. So it doesn't describe as much, but the standard deviation is in the units of my data. So I can tell you, hey, the mean is 10 and the standard deviation is 3, and you can visualize that and say, okay, plus or minus 3, um, that would be how, how it goes, how it flows around the mean. Now what I want to do is another problem. 
I want to almost call it a trick problem. It's, it's really not a trick problem. But it's a problem that if you were really good, you could probably tell what the answer is but without doing any calculations. So I want to show it to you. Let's find the sample standard deviation. Right? Let's find the sample standard deviation of the following data. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 4s. Uh, this is my data set. This could be the age of toddlers in a, in, a, in a daycare or something. Everybody's four years old. Okay, Everybody has the same age. Now I want to ask you, we're trying to find the standard deviation. What do you think the standard deviation of this data set is going to be? Think about what the standard deviation is. The standard deviation is telling you how spread out this data is around the mean. So how spread do you think this data is? I mean, that's a measure of spread. Well, all of the values in the data set are the same. To me, that says there is no spread. Literally, everybody is on top of everybody. There is no spread. If I put this in a list and tried to graph it, it would all be right on top of each other. There's no spread, no variation, no variance, no dispersion. Pick your adjective. It does, there's just no variation there. So you could almost just circle the answer, but I do think it's important to show how the calculation reflects that. And so since this is a sample standard deviation, we have s to represent the standard deviation. It's going to be the square root of the sum of xi minus the average value squared over n minus 1. This is all that we've done before. We've got it written on the other board over here. Inside is the sample variance. We just take the square root and call it the standard deviation. So the first thing we want to do is find the mean, x bar. The way you do that is add everybody up. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And we divide by 7. And so x bar, when you add all this stuff up you're, and divide by 7, you're just going to get 4. And it makes sense because if every single data value is identical, then the average value is the same as all of the values in the data set. I mean, if you're in class and everybody gets a 95 on the test, and everybody gets the same grade, then the average value is a 95. So that makes sense to me. Now let's plug everything into this variance uh, or this uh, standard deviation calculation. Now um, I know we could do the table and all that, but really this problem is so simple. It's almost like a trick problem. I really rather just you know kind of kind of blow it out here and show you. So on the top what we have is the data point which is 4 minus the mean which is also 4 and we're squaring that. You see what's going to happen? Every data point is going to be subtracting with 4. So I have 4 minus 4 squared plus 4 minus 4 squared plus 4 minus 4. The reason it's all identical is because every point is a 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 minus 4 squared. 4 minus 4 squared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, only 6 data points, so I have one more, 4 minus 4 squared. And on the bottom, I have n minus 1. I have 7 data values, so 7 minus 1 will go down there. I think you can see what's going to happen here. Underneath this radical, what I'm going to have is 0 squared, which is 0, 0 squared, which is 0. Every one of these terms is going to be 0. So I'm going to have a 0 here. 7 minus 1 is 6, and so it'll be the square root. What is 0 divided by 6? That gives you 0. What is the square root of 0? What you find is that the sample standard deviation is 0. That's what you get. The sample standard deviation is 0. So even if you didn't think hard about this problem, if you just cranked it through, the math supports common sense based on the definition. The standard deviation is supposed to measure how far, thing, how far your data set, on average, is spread about, about its mean, right? In this case, since all the data points are the same, the mean is 4, and because everybody's identical, there really is no spread about the mean. Everybody's on top of it, so the spread, or the standard deviation, should be 0. It, in, it indicates everybody's on top of each other, and that's what it is. So in this lesson, we have learned how to calculate the standard deviation. Uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is if the problem says it's a population standard deviation or if the problem says it's a sample standard deviation, 
Um, they're very slightly different calculations. That's why I spent so much time talking about the differences. But the calculations themselves are no more than addition and subtraction and multiplication. Very, very easy, but it's easy to make calculational mistakes. So my advice is write everything down. Don't skip too many steps. Um, you can also check your work with a calculator pretty easily nowadays and, and just make sure that you understand the concept of standard deviation. I cannot stress how important it is. Follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to continue learning about all these important topics of statistics and just building your skills with each and every lesson. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.